Insulin sensitivity describes how well your body's cells respond to insulin, a hormone that helps lower blood sugar levels by moving excess glucose out of your bloodstream and into your cells. Exercise also lowers blood sugar, and it does it with little or no help from insulin, making exercise one of the most important things you can do to improve insulin sensitivity. In this video, I share four scientifically supported ways to exercise for a better insulin response, and it doesn't matter if you're short on time. A lack of time is one of the main barriers when it comes to sticking with regular exercise. But do you have 30 seconds to spare? Exercise snacks are short bouts of vigorous exercise performed throughout the day. The concept of exercise snacks is still new, but early research shows that briskly climbing stairs for about 30 seconds every hour during an eight hour day lowers post-meal insulin levels in overweight individuals. Similar results were seen in a study where insulin-resistant participants engaged in six one-minute bouts of uphill walking before breakfast, lunch, and dinner. These pre-meal exercise snacks reduced post-meal blood sugar spikes with benefits persisting for up to 24 hours. Exercise snacks fit within the structure of your day with no need to go to the gym or carve out a significant period of leisure time for exercise. You can choose from any form of physical activity that boosts your breathing and heart rate, and you can easily incorporate them into your daily routine. For instance, you can get up from your computer and do 30 seconds worth of body weight squats or stair climbing to satisfy your snacking requirement. If you're a new parent, 30 seconds of lunges holding your baby will give you the blood sugar stabilizing benefit you're after. HIT or high intensity interval training is similar to exercise snacks in that it involves periods of exercise separated by periods of rest. However, whereas exercise snacks are spread throughout the day, HIT is compressed into an intense 20 minute workout that has you continually switch back and forth between exercise and active rest. Many studies demonstrate that HIT improves insulin sensitivity, with one 12-week study showing that overweight participants had improved insulin sensitivity after each session of high-intensity exercise. HIT is popular because it provides a host of benefits in a short time frame, and because the workouts are based on your perceived intensity, the exercises can grow with you as your fitness level grows. There are multiple ways to perform a HIT workout. Most people like to use a form of cardio such as running or brisk walking, either outdoors or on a treadmill, or cycling on a bike or stationary bike. For example, you can begin your workout by walking on a treadmill for three minutes to warm up, then perform six rounds of activity alternating between two minute periods of running and 30 seconds of walking. Conclude your workout with a two minute cool down and you're done. As you move throughout the day, your body devotes up to 40% of its cellular energy to a tiny pump called the sodium potassium pump that keeps your brain firing, heart beating, and muscles moving. This cellular communication is powered by electrolytes, which is why I am a fan of today's sponsor, Element. When you exercise, you sweat, and depending on your intensity level, you can lose over a thousand milligrams of sodium per hour. Element is formulated for anyone who stands to benefit from healthy hydration and is perfectly suited for athletes, folks who are fasting, and those following keto, low-carb, or whole food diets. Each stick delivers a meaningful dose of electrolytes with zero added sugar. I don't go a day without it and enjoy the great flavors. You can get a free eight count sample pack of Element's most popular drink mix flavors with any purchase at drinklmnt.com forward slash Dr. Becky. Find your favorite element flavor or share them with a friend. I'll leave a link in the description area below this video. If you don't want to do intense exercise, steady state cardio at a moderate pace will also work, but you'll have to spend more time doing it. The study I highlighted earlier, which discussed 20 minute HIIT workouts, also looked at 45 minute moderate intensity cardio workouts. They found that even though the pace was slower, the participants had similar improvements in insulin sensitivity after each exercise session. Walking briskly, jogging, hiking, and cycling are popular steady state exercises, but any activity that gets your heart rate up and that you can maintain for an extended period can work. So the only caveat with performing steady state cardio for insulin sensitivity is that you need to put in the time. How much time? Well, that will vary from person to person and by your speed, but consider aiming for 150 minutes per week of walking at a moderate pace. 
You can gauge a moderate pace by noticing your breathing. If you can speak, but feel like you have to take a breath every few words, you are likely in the moderate range. A study published at the end of 2024 found that 150 minutes per week was the time commitment needed to achieve common health goals like reductions in waist circumference and body fat. While the study did not focus on insulin, improving these metrics improves insulin sensitivity. You can break up those 150 minutes any way you'd like, and you can add to them for even better results. So if time is a factor, do 25 minutes of moderate intensity exercise six times a week. If you have time, do 60 minute walks three or more times a week. Now, as I mentioned, exercise performed at a moderate pace improves insulin sensitivity by increasing glucose uptake in muscle cells without requiring high insulin levels. Higher intensity exercises work a little differently, and we see this with weightlifting. Weightlifting and other resistance training exercises can cause a temporary insulin spike. However, this is generally beneficial and not the same as a spike from eating sugar or refined carbs. After a resistance workout, your muscles undergo a period of recovery and repair. To facilitate this repair, the body may briefly release insulin to help shuttle glucose into muscles. That insulin response is transitory and actually part of the muscle building or anabolic process, not the process that encourages fat storage. And because more muscle mass is associated with greater insulin sensitivity, regular resistance training is a valuable activity to add to your week. This study proposes an exercise program for people with insulin resistance that entails a full body workout three times a week. I will post the sample workout on screen here and provide a link to the study so you can save the image directly to your computer and print it off to take it with you to the gym. If you are a beginner, start with one set of 12 to 15 reps per exercise. You can move up in sets, weights, and repetitions as your strength improves. Both resistance training and aerobic exercise are effective for improving insulin sensitivity. Combining them maximizes your results. When you schedule your exercise week, consider alternating between three days of resistance training and three days of HIIT workouts, or combine three days of resistance training with 150 minutes of steady state cardio. The more insulin sensitive you are, the less insulin your body needs to manage blood sugar levels. That is something you want because it lowers your risk of developing insulin resistance, which can lead to type two diabetes, weight gain, and other metabolic disorders. You can fit exercise into your schedule. Even exercise snacks that only require 30 seconds of your time can lower post-meal blood sugar and insulin spikes, moving your body toward better insulin sensitivity. Thanks for watching. If you are also looking for a low stress way to improve your diet, I encourage you to download my free 0123 strategy. It is four daily habits that get results. To get a copy, click on the icon below me or the link in the description or more area below the video. Have a great rest of your day.